Hello, everyone, and welcome to RHAP. I'm your host, Aaron Armstrong, and I'm here tonight to talk about episode two of Big Brother Canada. We, we thought it would be an eviction episode, but uh, it was not. It was just an HOH winning episode, I guess. However, <laughs> joining me tonight to talk through tonight's episode, I have some uh, amazing guests, including the legendary Mitch Moffat from season four. How you doing, Mitch? Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I haven't Yay. been able to talk Big Brother in a long time because I have no friends who watch it. So I'm <laughs> I'm really happy to be here with you guys. <laughs> well, listen, now you have lots of friends. Uh... You always talk Big Brother. <laughs> yes. No, I listen to you guys all the time. And sometimes I get, I've been like, hesitant to join podcasts in the past because i'm like it's weird to talk about house guests and stuff when you have played the game but you know i'm ready i'm ready to spill some tea now <laughs> <laughs> ready to go uh well also joining us tonight is karsten how you doing karsten well i was doing better until i found out mitch doesn't think we're friends so <laughs> <laughs> uh, awkward <laughs> i said friends that talk to me about it i guess <laughs> Oh. Well, just then. kidding okay well I'll be oh, you'll be you getting weekly dms don't worry <laughs> um and of course with us tonight is chantelle how are you doing chantelle i'm doing pretty well and i know from past seasons i was kind of known as the oracle and what i don't know anybody on the season as of yet mm -hmm. but that you know I, of that i know of but i do work for Sunwing. So the sponsor of this season oh. is the airline that I've worked for for the last 10 years, um, whose flight um, I had Arissa Cox on in November is Sunwing Airlines. So I do feel connected to this whole cast because they're going to win a trip and likely I could probably be on their flight. And take them there down. There you go. Maybe you could re request it like, hey, that uh, that that the winner of the that show, uh, <laughs> exactly. I want to be on that flight. Exactly. I, I probably could. If I knew when it was, I could make it happen. <laughs> um, well, we did get uh, we got Honestly, I don't think the episode was uh, was too bad, despite the lack of an eviction. Um, we did get some digital dailies uh, over that uh, that took place over the last like four days. Um, and a lot of the episode actually was straight from the uh, the dailies. Uh, but it was still, I think, like a, a pretty fun episode. Always fun to see like Anthony and uh, Victoria, you know, doing their thing. And I did like this, the the competition uh, concept. I thought it was like uh, a, a fun one. And, and, you know, anything that's not overtly physical is uh, something I'm, I'm into. Um, so uh, I think we have a, a decent episode to talk about here, despite uh, the fact that we don't have any limited players to talk about. But um, Mitch. It's it has been a while. Uh, Eight what have years been <laughs> on the show since, since um, you know, forever. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Big Brother Canada has like such a spot in my heart. Like, I love this show so much. To me, it is the sort of like superior version. I connect to it so much. So I always want it to be so good. Um, I feel like so far it's been sort of like average for me. Like I feel like Big Brother Canada sometimes leans really hard into like the campiness. And I feel like they started to at the beginning with the premiere, but I kind of like lost a bit of that. I'm still having a lot of fun and it's so early. Like premieres are always like, like the first week is always just like getting to know people. Um, I feel like the twist, I'm still kind of like lukewarm on. I, I'm like really surprised that they didn't just do an All-Stars or like a bring back a full season. It it's really confusing to me that they only brought two people back spicy and Anthony, like they make sense to me as the people that would come back. But yeah, I was honestly kind of shocked to be like, what, what it doesn't really fit the theme. Like, I'm not sure that they fit into that. Uh, I guess fame. Like, I guess they both have like a level of fame. Yeah. So I just, I've been recently thinking like, I don't know not to talk about a different show, but if you watch Australian survivor, like I feel like they've found such a good lane of like this, over the top kind of campy editing style with crazy music. And I feel like Big Brother Canada kind of leans into that sometime. And they, I feel like I know they're different shows, but they could lean into it more. Um, so I just, I feel like it's a good start. And I know the show always gets better with the weeks, but I, I still have higher expectations, I think. If you had gotten a call for a full <laughs> season, what would have been oh. your answer? Yeah, no, I'd love to go back, honestly. Like, I, yeah, what are they why doing? Didn't they call me. I, I expected <laughs> to be the, the only male they called. Um, put him in the no. house. 
Yeah, no, I definitely wouldn't have expected to be like the one person out of two, like one male that they would contact. But yeah, I, I'm not totally like, do you guys have a take on why they wouldn't do all stars, but they would bring two people back? My assumption would be that uh, season five, which was a half and half, which was the most amount of people they've ever brought back, was also like one of their weakest rated seasons in terms of like viewership. And they had some trouble. And I don't think like the near cancellation came directly because of that season. But I think, you know, I think there are other things involved, but I think they're probably maybe a little worried to go full force. All and then the also in. like, you know, for what it's worth, I think, you know, all star seasons are a little more expensive. The True, but you know, like usually not to be a little shady, bit more, but like <laughs> a lot of Big Brother Canada players would go back for free. <laughs> I, I'm not trying to be like, like a, a lot of myself included, like I want to play again. I'm sure a lot of other people want to play again and would do it without a hefty fee. Um, but yeah, I just have been thinking about like even like the traders with all the reality stars and there's so many drag race all star seasons. Like it feels like we're in this era of so much excitement around like big announcements around cast and like these dynamics that are different. Like even on um, the Big Brother US Reindeer games, um, it was like kind of fun because they kind of talked about their relationships outside of the house and stuff. And I thought like shows don't normally do that. And it was really interesting. And so I thought it was an opportunity. It doesn't mean they couldn't still do it. But um, all that to say, the twist to me has been kind of like, I don't love that there's two, but the two that are there, I, I'm interested to see play. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel like, you know, I do like um, Anthony and Spicy B. I think they're both really fun, but I kind of just want to see either All Stars play or I want to see these newbies play because they're they're pretty dynamic. They're, they're creating a social dynamic that's like, okay, maybe we're going to see something a little bit different here. And then you have these All Stars that are coming back that have so much knowledge of the game that are probably going to be able to steer it in the direction that they want. And so it just kind of it kind of sucks that we just don't get to see these new players play their own game. But I think I will be entertained because I do like the two of them. So I guess you can't have yeah. both. I think that Big Brother Canada is just having a bit of an identity crisis. And I think they have been for a couple of years where there's been so many changes on the back end with like all the sponsors removing the live feeds and all of these changes. Um, Arissa hasn't been an executive producer for that long. And I'm sure that there's you know, tension with that as well of just, you know, more people in power that I think that there's like the very corporate side where they're just, you know, trying to make money. And then there's the super fan passion that's also behind the scenes there. And I just really think that it's two sides at war with each other trying to make the best product, but they both have very different perspectives of what the mm -hmm. best product is. Mm -hmm. I agree hundred percent. Yeah. I think like, I have a lot of love and respect for like all the crew and stuff. Not that I know so many, but I think they want to put on a great show. I'm sure as many of you probably agree, like a lot of the like Arissa and the team probably wanted to keep live feeds. Like there's a lot of things out of hands. It's very rare for a show in Canada to go on for 12 seasons, let alone like a reality show. So like, I guess <laughs> it's, it's just like we, we take what we can get because it behind the scenes they're probably saying well would you rather not have a show and i mean maybe maybe some people would say actually <laughs> we'd rather not. <laughs> but i i would rather have it and i hope that they kind of like get back it's it's just after last season i don't know how everyone else felt i didn't really love last season so i feel like it would have been nice to get, come back with a big bang but i still have a lot of faith and i think seasons always pick up like it needs a bit of momentum and this first week will we'll see but i i love the cast so far like i mm -hmm. am into the cast I don't know what you guys think. I think it's an extreme advantage to come back as a returning player, of course. Um, despite like giving them safety. And I know you have a lot of attention on you, but I just think like the way that people communicate in the house, they already know so much about you if you've been there before. So I wish they didn't have this advantage to just like automatically get HOH and get the control in the first week because that first week, which is often only a few days, of like that challenge, HOH, and then nomination is the riskiest part because you only have like 48 hours before that. If you can make it past that, then you can really like solidify your relationships with people. So I just wish that like Anthony and Spicy V had to like navigate that truly instead of just getting gifted that. Yeah, it's such an advantage when there's only like one or two returnees to be the only one because you're seen automatically as an authority to the other people in the house, right? Like what Anthony says to the people or what V says to the people is automatically going to carry more weight mm -hmm. than what's said by the people who also 
are just there for the first time. So I don't think they needed it. I really hate that like half the cast is safe in the first week. Like I think teams are also just such a bold choice. If you just like this is a good teams. cast, <laughs> let them cook. Know, just let yeah. them cook. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like, oh, of course, it's these alliances that kind of happen. Like, there's just going to be a divide no matter what. And I don't usually like those two sides. Like, I want people to be working together and try, like, you know, different factions coming together instead of it's like, okay, well, I kind of have to stick with my side right now. I'm going to be voting with them likely anyways. And it just kind of automatically creates a divide when there might have been more fluidity if, like, just kind of at least let people, you know, everybody be vulnerable or, or whatnot and just have, like, that one person be safe. Yeah, I mean, it feels like to me that in terms of them trying to like mimic something that was successful, I think it this feels to me like they're trying to be like BB25, where it's like, hey, Sari came back mm. uh, like and she was one person and like, hey, that was that was fun. People like that. Right. Um, <laughs> well, which, did people like, I feel like we liked that. We loved it. <laughs> That's <laughs> the thing, right? And we didn't seem to love it how we did. And but also, like the reality is they. To Mitch's point, I think they, if they're going to be like looking for inspiration, I think the more recent inspiration, despite my issues with the show and its format, I think the traders is proof that like people do want to see like big casts of people they recognize playing together. Um, you know, season two of the traders, massive ratings. Um, even over season one. Um, and it's I think entirely due to the cast um that brought a lot of eyes to it uh and so yeah i think that is an indication that maybe this was the right time to uh to pull something out there's i think a lot of options uh for players that they could have brought back um but that's you know all that said uh you know a as an anthony fan like uh i'm not mad myself <laughs> <laughs> well and it's also just like to me if it's like oh season 12 all-star like that doesn't feel like an all-stars number of a season which i know obviously that means nothing based on when they've done all stars <laughs> in the states anyway but it's just like 12 just feels like ugh, it's just 12 like right. it's, I mean, 12 it's is better than 22 right to be honest like to me i think 12 and 22 equal seven's pretty good though seven phenomenal chef's kiss perfect <laughs> what about eight for it wasn't survivor eight oh yes. oh yeah it was mm -hmm. eight and you know what it's a weird one. I always well, yeah. think that it was season seven, even though it obviously wasn't season I'm, seven. Right? Like, in my brain, seven. I'm like, oh yeah, All-Stars, it's always seven. I, I, I've it. been thinking this the whole time. I was like, it wasn't Rob on season six and All-Stars was seven? Like, I've always just thought that. So I'm very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. This yeah. isn't the Survivor recap, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> um Well, I, I and I agree. I think that, like, um, you know, having safety... I get it, right? Like I get giving them safety for the first week, maybe. And in and, and like the usual way, we talked about this last night, but like the usual way is they don't get to compete in the HOH. They don't get to have that power, but they're safe for the first week because, hey, if you're a fan of these two mm -hmm. players and they're out in two episodes, like that's kind of a shame. You want to give them at least a little bit of space. But then when it's like, okay, they're safe. And not only do they get to compete. They get power. It's only them that get to come yeah. to the <laughs> And then tonight we learned there's no eviction, which means it's an extra long week for the first HOH, which I... we've determined in the U.S. is huge. Uh, extra mm -hmm. time is the HOH. If Anthony is going to be uh, making nominations, he has a lot of time to do damage control and set things up for the following week. Yeah, it's a lot of control to have at the very beginning when normally the first HOH is like fast and you can accidentally nominate someone that in two days you're actually friends with. But if you have more days to really establish, play around with people's emotions and know who is clicking with who and how to pit people against each other, like you can just really see a lot more established. And so I, um, I mean, I'm still curious to see what happened. I know like down the road, we can probably forget this. The first week of Big Brother often is just like, even when you're living it, you're just like, I don't know, I guess I'm going to vote that person out. Like, there's not enough to go on right at that beginning. And the game dynamic changes so much that suddenly three weeks in, like you're friends with somebody else or mm -hmm. learning to love somebody else. And so I think that can happen with us as an audience as well. So for me, it's sort of looking at these first two episodes and going like, we just have to get through them. I wish they were like amazing and lined up exactly with how I'd want it to happen or see it as a fan. 
if it's not though it doesn't mean the season can't still gain momentum mm -hmm. yeah well uh this episode we saw that um anthony and, and victoria of course are uh, they're teaming up as expected. Uh, they're working together. We do have, again, uh, the, the digital dailies have dropped. Uh, we won't talk about anything beyond the episode until the end of this podcast in terms of like spoilers. Um, but uh, we can maybe, you know, add some some extra context here or there, depending on like what we're talking about. But but honestly, like a good portion of this episode, as I mentioned before, was like straight from the the dailies. Uh, and especially for the first couple of days, they were a bit more sparse. Uh, so I don't know if, if there really is a lot of extra stuff <laughs> to, to talk about for <laughs> up until this point in uh, in the episodes. Um, but uh, but we I do think it was interesting that in the in the episode last night, Avery was like the most vocal person of of like, hey, we got to get out these bets. Uh, we're all going to agree if the, if returning players come into this house they're done uh and that lasted until she saw spicy v walk into the room hey i was ready to say move over first five the first 12 has this covered yeah it was a little naive to think like i can understand the moment and like when you're in a group like that and you're just excited and there's energy and, and maybe no one will ever hold it against them anyway but to think that 12 people can hold together and or not leak to whomever and, and to be the one who's loudest saying it when you don't even know what's happening um i mean maybe says something about avery i don't think it will really matter in the long run because they all probably felt that actually in the moment like yeah whoever comes in here we're not we're not giving them any any room and now that they're there of course like the dynamic will change but yeah to sit there and, and not be like we're obviously not all gonna get along here obviously i'm probably gonna hate one of you in the next 24 hours these two are gonna be fighting these two are gonna be making out like you just don't know yet so it's funny to jump on that sort i think she kind of said it though just to like uh, everybody just is so nervous about being the first mm -hmm. one out of the game and like you know it's like okay well if we just go after these returnees like we have like two full weeks that we can be in this game together so like let's just do that and so i think that's like the anxiety about like being the first boot it's like yeah. hey not even, nobody wants to be the first boot right so let's just get these people out and then we can be in the game for a little bit longer so i think that's the group anxiety is what they were drawing on when well, she probably wasn't the only one to say that they just they have to choose what they're going to show and it's more funny to show her saying it considering yeah. when victoria walks in she's like oh my god <laughs> Uh, yes, well, uh, probably the biggest storyline from both the, the drops and, um, you know, we saw it in the episode here that uh, the women are coming together and they're not here to play big brother. They're here to play big sister. Uh, and the women. seven of them, <laughs> seven of them are, the, the several of them are going to make it to the end. Jelinski. <laughs> Um, I, I, what does fun. everyone think? Okay. I love that the women seem to actually all want to work together. Love it. Beautiful. My dream. Uh they could they could stand to be a little bit more subtle, it seems. Um but I also think if they were being subtle and it wasn't obvious, the men are still gonna be like well, all the women are obviously working together, and that's so dangerous. We have to get them out. Nah, nah, nah. Like, yeah, it's like if it women so much anyways. just look at each other, it's like, well, they're all <laughs> yeah. in an alliance together. Like, like it no is women. <laughs> they're damned if they do, damned if they yeah. don't. Kind of traveling thing. to the washroom together. Like, oh yeah. wow, <laughs> why are women always going to the bathroom together? Like, what's that about? <laughs> they can talk about us. It's so dangerous. Like, and that's the thing. Like, you, two women could be in a room together, and those two women could literally be cooking the whole house dinner because they're the best cooks in the house and the men would be like wow mm -mm -mm -mm. the women are together it's obvious like whether Laughing they are or not scheming. <laughs> it's probably because their cycles sync up so maybe they're just like it's just it's <laughs> yes immediately on entrance that's to so the house scary. That's so really, scary. It's, it's kind of scary it's kind of magical to be honest <laughs> 
but at least like <laughs> it makes me happy that the those conversations can happen it at least means like it's an environment where like the girls are comfortable around each other i do believe most of them feel it as well and i know there's some like controversy around not controversy but like maybe spicy v it's like what's she gonna do is she gonna betray the girls has she done this in the past like that kind of stuff um but at least i think all of their hearts are in the right place and it's when you're in a room like that of course you're just gonna be like yeah like no one wants to be the first person if there's an all girls group here like don't put me up i'm fine with that and it makes sense v is gonna go along with it as well um so i'm excited i hope something comes from it even if it's not like a full girls alliance like a full house of girls i just hope that v isn't the one to like blow it up or be the reason that it doesn't I mean, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, and this is what drives me so like m it makes me so mad and like i like these very entertaining great choice to bring back in the cast obviously i'm biased there's only one bb can nine contestant that i care about brayden white obviously <laughs> um <laughs> but she, like she she doesn't even mean to i feel like she in her heart is like i'm for the girls and i'm with them for this alliance but she still can't help but say the wrong thing to the wrong yeah, people. Yeah, it's interesting to me. I guess I'm also going to give a disclaimer here just of like, as I'm talking, I'm sure some house guests when they come out are going to listen to these podcasts. I want to I want to like give my real opinion on anything, but obviously there's all love, all respect for all these people. I understand and also stop positions. listening. If oh, you yeah. were on this season of Big Brother <laughs> Canada, don't. like please yeah, this go is enjoy not good this time for your mental health. I would not. Do not listen to this. It will I not could. help. This was not meant well, for your consumption. <laughs> yeah. But it, you know, it's the first, it's the second episode of the season. Some of them are here <laughs> right now listening. So if you are, we love you. Our opinions might change your view. Yeah, go 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 touch grass or something. I don't know. No, you can listen. It's totally fine. Um, oh. I I'm not gonna say anything like intense right now. It's just like especially with the returnees obviously it's weird to comment on like fellow like house guests and stuff like that um i think v's in an interesting position because obviously the only thing that's bothering me is that she's like kind of already telling anthony everything i think it's one thing to like of course she needs to like work with him it's you're obviously already have a relationship you're going to be communicating you're going to be like okay we got to have a plan together um but i think she can hold her cards a little closer and i guess we're not like it's only been so many days and she's already kind of like spilling all the beans to him um it just feels like I i'm not sure like if she's really thinking through it and it's interesting to think about the returnees from the perspective of like every returnee is trying to redeem themselves in some way or, or they're thinking about their past game right and so i I don't know, but I can't really remember about the past games. Like Anthony's season, I was only a couple after mine. So I only was kind of in and out of that season. And then V, like, did she betray the girls on her season? Is this the story? I forget. Latoya. She, um... she just didn't really pick. Like, she was very, like, waffly, easily, you know, dissuaded from a, a path, made some pretty poor strategic decisions, I would say. Um, like, she's it... obviously coming. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I don't know. I, I was also just said like it's important to know like I'm pretty sure that Anthony and V are like they're in the group of alumni that hang out a lot. Like you see them on social media hanging out. So like I think she's seeing this from a friend perspective, but Anthony turned off the friend perspective when he walked through those doors. Yeah. And I think like he knows like if he and V are friends, he's going to use that to whatever point. I mean, the nice thing is V is a little less predictable. So like we don't know how long <laughs> this will last. And at least that's what makes her exciting to me is like she may start this way and her heart might move another way. And like maybe there'll be a lot more tension. We're already seeing a little bit of tension between mm -hmm. V and Anthony, which I think is exciting. I'd rather that be the narrative just from like an audience perspective than, oh, these two friends coming from the outside world who have already played this game now are in an alliance they're controlling most of the house because one has the girls one has the guys that to me is just like a very boring narrative i don't well, mitch <laughs> anthony is telling v that that's the best thing that will ever happen in big brother of all time <laughs> uh, i for k anthony's so good and like you can't deny that he's great right but I had 
blocked out of my brain how much time and energy Anthony <laughs> dedicates to making sure everything I hate happens on a season of Big Brother Canada. Like, I'm like, please, like, again, I make sure the guys the come shows. together. Like, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, here's the best strategic move. Here's whatever, blah, blah, blah. But what about what I want? And Anthony <laughs> doesn't give me what I want. Oh yeah, I mean, he will straight up say, like, uh, oh, this is a player, they're going to think for themselves. Uh, <laughs> do something it. bold. We don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Which I mean is a reasonable, yeah, smart way to play. He's, 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 so good. Like, <laughs> he's so good, and I hate but, him for it. <laughs> like, I wonder for him because, like, the pretty boys. Like, I don't know how you guys felt about that alliance. I never like an all boys alliance. Obviously, um, not that I disliked them, but to me, it was like mm -hmm. a, any steamrolling alliance, especially if it's all male. I'm like, okay, I'm checking out. Um, I'm wondering. He, I'm sure he's heard that to a degree, and so I'm curious if his narrative coming in is like, I need to have a, a better mix of like girls and guys. Obviously, he's not going to be able to recreate that same alliance. He's already like literally narrated that on the show um so it'll be interesting to see like what he decides to do and like what story he's trying to tell um i will say like he's i'm curious to see i, I know a lot of people say hey, he was like really amazing on the feeds i i kind of forget how he was I, i'm sort of like i'm not totally seeing it and i am excited to see it this season um his conversations with people all kind of like fall flat for me but maybe if i was in the room with him i might feel different you know what i mean but watching what they've shown on these episodes i was like i'm not like v to me is a much better communicator you can feel her heart she's like really in the room with you i know sometimes she's putting on like just like the pizzazz to to win you over but i feel like of the two of them obviously i would be gravitating towards her as of now yeah i mean that was that was the thing about anthony is that like early on uh a lot of the narrative surrounding him was like, I mean, sure, he's getting his way right now, but this is not going to last. Like, this can't keep mm. working. And um, and I think that, like, I think that he has gotten better since uh, season seven about, or, like, in terms of, like, the reach that he has. Because I think in season seven, he had, he had his people that, like, he just, he had full control over them. <laughs> And then there were some people that he just like he bounced off. Of. Um, and so far this season, it does seem like he's got a thread in everyone, but I, but not as many that he's like completely controls at least mm. yet. Um, well, it's but been like five days, so give right. him the rest of his first <laughs> week of safety, and he might everybody have a coming more... with information. Yeah. Like... Um, but yeah, I mean the thing that the thing that Anthony does well is that he will just like weed his way into somebody's mind um and uh and and once he gets there he can really just like direct their actions um and when and if he gets like if he gets one person great he's got one soldier if he gets another person now he's using this person to spread info over here that he's then using this person to reinforce and then he comes in and uses that to get his way into that person's <laughs> mind um and it starts to spread like a virus uh so um so it'll be interesting to see if he can pull that off again because the thing about season seven is that he had the backing of this very solid structure and i wouldn't even necessarily say it was like the the players surrounding him obviously dane was very talented um but like it was it was the structure of the secret alliance and the parachutes the thing that the kind of the brigade kind of originated um, and how like Dane had his people and, and Adam had his people um, and that structure really allowed him to flourish. On top of that, those people in the alliance were also winning a lot of the competitions mm -hmm. um, and that gave him a lot of freedom as well to get into that position to do as well as he did. Um, so I do think he comes in obviously with a huge advantage. He also has the experience and now like knowledge of the show and the game. Um, but he has to play without that structure um, and he can't it's as we've talked about it's hard for him to like rebuild that structure mm -hmm. exactly because it's too obvious now so he mm -hmm. has to try to do something that's slightly different um, and he doesn't have experience working in that kind of environment so it'll be interesting to see how it uh, how it happens from here but, but yeah it is interesting like and I do think that we see some people uh, who are like falling into what he's saying when he's having the conversations with him. And I think there are some people, maybe like uh, Vivek, um, who are like cautiously approaching him, thinking that they can maybe utilize him 
but uh, but but aren't like sucked in entirely. Because I thought that conversation he had with Vivek was very interesting, um, and uh, in the way that sort of like Anthony was like, "Hey, you don't you don't even know you don't even know who you're dealing with, dude." Um. <laughs> Taryn, I wanted to ask because I my memories of BB Ken Seven are not the best but anthony he didn't create the pretty boys right he was brought in no it was, it was more so dane and adam 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 was the guy that came in like i want to do this mm -hmm. um and he bonded with dane and anthony pretty quickly yeah. dane and anthony were like tight um and so the two of them came on board but adam always thought he was close closer to dane but it was really anthony that was with dane yeah and yep, then, of yep, course, yep. they picked up Mark as kind of like the, yeah, uh, well, because Damien got the Canada's vote and was not in the room <laughs> at the time. Let's be very. I was part of it. Yes, <laughs> it all, it was, another part of it was that Damien was not a fan of the show, uh, and and even though Anthony wasn't either, like Anthony was so into like the culture mm -hmm. of the show, mm -hmm. whereas Damien was just like yes. <laughs> fair very very fair um yeah and I, I think you're to your point about the competitions as well he can't even if it wasn't obvious to try the exact same structure of the four men and then they're each gonna have a woman on the outside as a parachute the men of the season don't seem to be as physically fit as on season seven like i'm not like i'm sure they i mean people can be sneaky fit all the time right but like adam was like this bodybuilder and Dane was the hockey player. Like, I feel like they were just so dominant in all the physical competitions. I think it's going to be just a different blend this year. So it'll be exciting to see a, if Anthony wins more competitions, B um, if he is able to really take the reins and create the structure, or if he needs someone else to take that on, it's just, it's just gonna be interesting to see how he approaches a different game. Yeah, especially like if he can still maintain control and power if if he doesn't have HOH in the pocket of the people he's closest to. I think that'll be like the best tell of like if he actually is a really strong player. And I'm only saying this as someone who doesn't also remember season seven like so clearly. So I'm excited to see that. Um, but, you know, anyone else can emerge from that as well. Personally, like I, when he got so like annoyed at vivek even possibly giving him <laughs> advice to me i'm like have a little humility like right? he's, just, he's just being a nice person being like here's my perspective on like what's going on in the house i get it you're going back in the house you've got a bigger a bit of an ego like of course everyone would especially around newbies but that's something that to me i'm like is there a little bit of a lack of self-awareness in that so this is interesting that. to me because i i when i watched this on the the dailies I did have a reaction to this when Vivek started saying like, well, here's my advice to you. And it wasn't necessarily that he was giving advice, but it was more like what he was saying to me, which was like, hey, you are a big threat. People are saying this. Yeah, it's like, so hmm. here's what you should do to like limit that. To me, that's like, well, I haven't heard this. Who's saying this, right? Like, mm -hmm. because you're saying this like you think it. Mm -hmm. And if you're not saying who, like, if we're working together, if you trust me, why aren't you telling me who I should be worried about that's saying this? It sounds to me like you're just trying to put a little bit of a scare into me and that you yeah. think I'm a big threat. Um, which later in the dailies, you know, I think is kind of maybe how Vivek sees uh, Anthony a little bit. And I think he wants to work with him. I think we saw that. But like, um, for me, when I saw Anthony, like, you don't even know, that's, that's what I thought he was reacting to. Uh, because it would have, it would have set me a little bit off. Like, oh, uh, you kind of maybe think I'm a threat, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, why would you point that out if you didn't really think that yourself? Right. Yeah. You wouldn't just be giving me friendly advice. <laughs> I took it more as him trying to be like, look, Anthony, I'm with you. I'm going, I'm like giving you some information, but also he didn't fully commit to it, yeah. which was the problem, right? Like he kind of straddle both sides of that which is not yeah ideal. and it's still not it's not like the best look to be like let me give you advice yeah it's, no don't say it like, like that especially like because Chris, it came right after him asking for advice like yeah, he was like true. anthony you know so much about this <laughs> what should i be doing and then like here's what you should be doing by the way <laughs> yeah, which to me like, is like okay so like were sense, you just trying though. to butter me up like, uh, like you clearly think you know what you should be doing. <laughs> but like in that situation, like all you have to do is say, hey, like, you know so much and I really respect you and I would love to know if you have any advice for me. And then when you get the advice and you go, and hey, just so you know, 
I've heard a couple rumblings of people talking about how big of a threat you are. So just know people are saying that and then maybe have a name you're willing to throw under the bus if you're going to get, you know, interrogated a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think then you're like with yeah. Anthony, right? Totally. And maybe he'll protect you a little bit more as he's getting his, you know, hands into all of the other pots. Maybe he's not going to try as hard to manipulate you because he thinks he already has you. Whereas yeah, this is I like agree, you, you totally. chose no path. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> and it dang, wasn't like Kristen, he was like have... conspiring with him. And, like, <laughs> Don't even start with me. Uh -oh. <laughs> you should play this game. Uh, uh, the I'm also like, yeah, it. bring you back. Honestly. Yeah. Well, who's the, other guy? Who's the other devil or the other hell person? Um, oh, Mike. Mikey's living his best life selling real estate in Toronto. He does not need this show. <laughs> Sorry, Chantal, I cut you off, though. You uh, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Um, but what, one thing I wanted to say, though, about Anthony just in general, I've met him a couple times in person, and he does have um, a, a strong presence because he's very tall and he's bigger, but he has, like, a soothing voice, and you feel kind of safe around him. And it's like, mm -hmm. whatever he says, they're like, yeah. Like, you kind of just get lulled into agreeing with him and feeling kind of comforted by him. And so I can understand why people will like, yeah, maybe they're going off to being like, in the beginning, being like, yeah, I, I need to get him out. But then you kind of hang out with him. And it's kind of like, oh, he wants to work with me. Mm -hmm. And like, he knows what's going on here. And he has that presence and that feeling of safety. Um, I think that that's one of the ways that he's able to really get in really good with people so that, he's, that he is able to potentially manipulate them. And so that's what I think his his charm or his mist is in the game. He is like the best hype man. Like, uh, <laughs> like he will make you feel like super supported and like, uh, like, hey, you're my guy. You're a lion, Taryn. Okay, you are exactly. a lion, and I am loyal to Listen, the Listen, it works on me. I'm not, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna front. <laughs> it, on this, like, too. <laughs> it, it is the best skill you can have in this game. It's like sometimes watching from the outside, watching this episode, you see him saying it to many people, and so it mm. feels like it's fake. But I, I guess you're right. Like when you're with someone and you feel their presence, a lot of people who watch the show go like, "Well, why didn't you just go work with those numbers?" because you could have created something it really is all about like how you feel with people mm -hmm. and so if anthony actually does have that presence around people whether or not it's always translating through the screen because we're like seeing him do it to everyone that is a superpower and um something that kind of gets missed from the outside sometimes that it's like it's not just as easy as grabbing numbers mm -hmm. when like your emotions and your connections like play such a deep role in the way you interact with these people and trust them yeah. Yeah, so uh, so I guess like going back to the women, um, it, like seven seven women in a, in an alliance, the men are starting to worry about. It. The men are now talking about are the women gonna be aligning together? Um, now I think what's interesting about this season, obviously this is a fairly common thing to happen at the start of a season, is like the women start talking, the guys start talking. Usually it breaks apart pretty quickly because relationships develop, whether romantic or not. Uh, between the women and the men and then all of a sudden the women are like well i get along better with this guy than i do mm -hmm. this woman so it kind of makes sense for me to go with the people i feel better about than you know just based on these you know lines that we've drawn however i think part of what's different about this season is that it came right after last season <laughs> And something that had, <laughs> that has been said on the feeds or on the 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 dailies um is that like we're going to look like idiots if we let what happened last season mm. happen to us. Nobody wants to be Claudia. Like, nobody wants to be the person that Not let Claudia. the tie oh. get through. They were, they were literally like, there were like six women and one dude, and the one dude won. Like, uh, <laughs> like which has, which has really, like, got a lot of them, like, putting up the, bar the, the, the barriers. Like, we can't even let one guy get through. Uh, like, it has to be all of us like we cannot let them get through um which i think is like genuinely what they kind of have to do given the structure of the competitions where one guy can just win out from the final <laughs> eight uh or nine um well, but again like will it hold it's also really different though when you look at the pre-game interviews every season they always ask every woman basically do, do you want to work with women or do you not want to work with women because of course it's a given that the men will work together, but it's not, it's never a given if the women will. And normally you'll get 
probably half the women are people cast saying, I want to work with the women. I want to make this work. And about half are like, well, no, like I'd, I, I, I get along better with boys. And then it just is almost an impossible structure, right? Because the, half of the people going in, it's just a complete non-starter. They're, they're always going to sell it out. This season, every single person is saying, I want women at the end. It's the girls. It's the girls and the gays. Like, th it's just got so much more momentum, I feel, than we've seen in other seasons. And that combined with what happened last season, maybe, maybe they have a <laughs> shot. But Anthony could always come in and ruin our plans <laughs> that's the big the biggest issue for them right now is that anthony just won this hoh and he's well aware of the fact that the women are working together and he's already named two of the mrs targets yeah <laughs> yeah i i hope something comes together from it i also am always like is it the girls in the gays i always wonder like will i be included this time <laughs> <laughs> no but actually i'm like no i'll sacrifice myself for the girlies if there's like a true girl alliance like you can sacrifice me and that's why um, you'd always be included mitch always yeah no i'm glad to know like i didn't watch their preseason interviews if they actually are because my judgment on them watching them do that is like you got to be self-aware enough to know like not all these girls are probably going to stick to an all-girls alliance but maybe they are really catching the vibes like we actually are all planning and really want to do that but i would be in a room even if it was all men or anyway when you're in a room beyond four or five people like you've got eight people in a room i'm like we got to be careful about what we're saying here because eight mm -hmm. is way too many and in the big brother house it's like a week is so long, like it is so long in that house that everything you say will make its way to almost everyone else. Not everything. You can find some secret alliances, but it's just like, yeah, if you're in a room with eight people, unless you really know that you guys are like so tight and this is so early in the game, I just think you have to be a little more skeptical. And of course, you can be like soft saying like, yeah, girls alliance, but it's like kind of a risk to say that. But I, I, I really hope. It felt like they were genuine when they all came together, all seven of them. Oh, I was like, <laughs> I know, right? I'm just like, I <laughs> well, want to Then V. Then V's like, and I love all girls, but I have to tell Anthony. And I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, no, but like, V, you can be working with him and you also cannot share, like you could not share this information and still exactly. be working with him. You you don't have to tell him everything. She's um, though, and it's really hard to <laughs> wrangle I mean, her in. Yeah. I think like one of the things I see a lot now that we've had like early feeds for the US for a long time and now that we're getting these like drops from the early days of a Big Brother Canada I think a very very common thing that we see with especially new players in the first few days of the game is that they simultaneously say too much and too little like <laughs> they don't talk enough game uh and the game that they talk is way too candid uh and they end up telling everybody like they go from one conversation where they're like, yeah, I just had this conversation. Then they go to the next conversation. They're like, yeah, I just had that conversation. <laughs> and, it's like, and then eventually they learn to start being more guarded. Um, but like an astute player, it would be it would be very easy for them to pick up like, oh, this person was saying all of this stuff to me yesterday. Now, all of a sudden, they don't have anything to say to me hmm. because they finally picked their lane. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so like it's ideal, I think, to be a little more consistent and a little more guarded in terms of how much you say to people and i think that that's where um that's you know that's that's why <laughs> we have seen like uh, uh, victoria who uh i think basically she's picked and she's not telling the women that she's super super tight with anthony she's telling them that she's good with him um and so i like that she's at least picked a lane she's not telling at both sides everything mm -hmm. um but uh you know should she be telling anthony everything right now probably not uh, you want to you want to keep some things for yourself, but it is early and there's lots of time. And I don't think that like I don't think Anthony's going to be looking to like exploit uh, Victoria's position anytime soon. Um, so I think that there's there's lots of time. And honestly, like if I'm V and uh, like as long as the women don't start like dropping one by one, like I, I'll feel pretty solid because I do think that Anthony will be considered to be like a bigger target than me for a, a large part of the game. And I do think that he will he will try to protect her for as long as possible. Um, so for as long as he has influence, she's probably in a decent place. And if he loses influence, it's probably him that goes. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, so not bad, but you, of course, have to eventually worry about the fact that he will be setting himself up more so than he will be setting you up for the win. 
Um, but we do see this a little bit of uh, disagreement here between Anthony and uh, Victoria in the HOH competition. Uh, she goes to him right before the comp, and and I I don't think she meant this maliciously. I think that uh, the way that like uh, Spicy V talks to the women, she genuinely feels like yeah they have the power in the house right now. Um, and so I genuinely think she meant it in the sense of like I will take this one like because the women are in power and a guy is going to go. I'd rather I do it than you do it, so you don't lose face with the guys. Um, but of course, Anthony was like. Mm, girls are coming together. I don't want to let the women have power. <laughs> like, <laughs> see, that's and that's the problem with V. Like she doesn't. She she goes like okay A to D, but she's missing the B and C steps of like obviously this is gonna make Anthony feel some kind of way, and maybe just say hey we had already agreed like I'm gonna win this one what's the strategy for how we're going to make that not look suspicious versus so glad I'm winning this one. And here's why. And <laughs> like, it, it just doesn't, it, it's just always going to rub someone, especially like Anthony, who is so confident and feels so strong in his game abilities and in his just place that when he, it's it's just like when he's getting like advice from Vivek, right? He's he's not gonna take well to that. He gets to be like the big brother figure who puts his arm around you and tells you, you know, what to do and that you're stronger than you thought you were. He he doesn't take orders and not, it wasn't an order, but you can see how something like that feels like an order to someone who does not take orders. I think yeah, though, because Victoria is really open and candid i think that if she was hedging and she was a little bit more guarded and she wasn't saying everything to anthony i think that might spook him and i think that might be worse for her game than if she he knows her to be open and just gonna say what she means and and that's why he can work with her because he can trust that and know where she's coming from and be able to play within that and so if she kind of changed it up i think he would sniff that out right away and then not have any trust for her and so i think it would he wouldn't be protecting her as as much as he is right now I do agree. That's fair. I think, I think like, but... I'd, I'd, I'd rather her be too open than poorly play, tr poorly try to close herself mm -hmm. off. That's yeah, fair. She can't, I don't think. Like, it's I... like not, it's not part of her <laughs> DNA. That, that's why I love V. Secret and yeah. I think, yeah. Come on. You also, that? What, yeah, it's what makes her amazing TV as well. Mm -hmm. And like with Kristen and Anthony, not like him never doing what you want in TV. I'm just like, yeah. I really hope what she ends up doing makes the TV I like. Yeah. But uh, it might not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think best case scenario for the season right now is that like, uh, maybe not depending on what you're rooting for, of course, but like I maybe for me, best case scenario is that like uh, that it, like Anthony does well, but like Victoria makes it hard for him at every step. Well, yeah, like, that's fine. Like, oh, like, oh, <laughs> right? Because like if you if you look at season seven, and there might be a one or two weeks that I'm not remembering well, because again, it was a million years ago, uh, it seems. Uh, but like. Anthony never really had to deal with like a true wild card at at any point, right? Like the only real thing was when uh like Kira won the competition that kept it from being all the pretty boys together, which was like not really a wild card. It was just a comp didn't fall quite exactly how they wanted for the first time. Victoria is a wild card. You do <laughs> not know what she is going to do. And she wants to be self-interested but she also just is so chaotic that she can't always be as self-interested as like a perfect strategic player would be that's fun anthony having to deal with someone at, like absolutely chaotic every single week that that could be fun i can be on board for that yeah and it'll be nice when they're even if they're working together when their interests start to like cross paths of like oh, I actually wanted to keep these girls and now you're still hung up on this or or whatever the dynamic may be. Like, I, I am excited to see. I hope they do clash, honestly. That's what I hope happens because it will make it much more interesting. And then it will feel less annoying that two people who were potentially friends coming into the game um, <laughs> were put in the game together. You know what I mean? They hang out all the time. <laughs> like, they're always on Instagram. Yeah, which makes me feel a little like maybe they won't because if they actually are close friends, then you you wouldn't 
turn on your friend. Like, I mean, who you are can you in the fight game. the worst with? Who do you say the meanest things in the world to? <laughs> no, that's the person fair. you care about the most. <laughs> but you wouldn't like nominate them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I just but, like, I'm, I can I'm see curious. her doing it. That's something yeah. bad. I can see her being it, like, look at that. Invisible <laughs> HOH. <laughs> she gets the invisible <laughs> HOH and 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 Dougie says something that she doesn't like. Who mm-hmm. did that, Anthony? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> who who would have the audacity? The audacity. No, I still have it. No, oh, not the audacity. <laughs> um. All right. Should we talk a bit about the the drops? Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, as I mentioned, there's not really a lot of of extra information. Uh, we don't even have the nominations yet. Um, just really some more extra context and stuff they might end up showing in future episodes. So. Light spoiler warning, but not a huge one. The Office of Civil Defense has issued the following message. This is a spoiler warning. A spoiler warning means that an actual spoiler against this country has been detected and that protective action should be taken. <laughs> That's art there. Just us like jamming. Into that <laughs> just like slowly swaying <laughs> a little yeah, bit. Trying to be like, okay, I'm going to bop my shoulders a little bit. <laughs> Listen, uh, you you don't you don't get you don't get a full dance unless you have full feet. That's uh, that's true. <laughs> uh, we gotta we gotta yeah. tell someone clip this and send it to Arissa. Yeah, Arissa. That'll be the, that'll be the thing that gets the feeds. Back. Listen, until we get full feeds, this podcast is the town from Footloose. Okay. <laughs> so uh, obviously, Anthony is the HOH. Um, now one of the big sort of storylines is that the episode hadn't, hasn't covered yet is that, uh, Tola in that conversation with the guys about how the women are working together and Anthony was like, don't say anything to anyone has said a lot of things to a lot of people (laughs) specifically he's gone to the women and he's been like, so there's usually like a women's alliance, right? Like, (laughs) is there one? (laughs) And they're like, what? No. Oh, my God. Get this guy out of here. <laughs> oh, so he went in a way that was not even like, I'm going to bring you information. He was like trying to pretend to suss it out. <laughs> yeah, he's been he's been and and they the some of the women that he has talked to feel a little bit grilled, a little bit like he's trying to fish. He's trying to like get he's worried about a women's alliance. He's panicking. Um, And uh, having watched this episode, it does feel like uh, this the HOH competition might have been what sparked his panic. Uh, he's like, why does V hate me? Um, <laughs> and on, like on top of the fact that uh, that he's, you know, heard that there is a women's alliance. I think he's trying to like talk to the women. I think he's trying to like get in with them. But like, I think it comes across as grilling. It comes across as like he's worried, he's panicking. And so a lot of the women are looking at Anthony to maybe target Tola for them. Hmm. Um, however, Anthony had a conversation with Tola up in his HOH room where he was basically like, listen, I got you, man. Like, uh, (laughs) um, so Anthony, as we saw in the episode, looking a little bit more in the direction of Janine, um, it seems to be the primary target from, uh, the little bit of perspective that we have, uh, which Honestly, makes a decent amount of sense for him. Janine has been kind of the main ringleader of uh, like gathering the women together. She has been the most um, sort of uh, uh, like upfront, uh, like active player uh, to the point that she's worried she's doing too much. And honestly, I think in most most seasons, it's not. It's not too much. I think she's doing a great job. And this season with Anthony and V there, unfortunately, it's it's uh, not quite working anthony feels like she hasn't talked to him enough uh and that uh that she might be somebody that he would be looking at which is actually kind of funny because she she actually really likes anthony and really wants to go far with him but apparently just hasn't communicated that to anthony herself um and so she seems to be who he's looking at i assume noms maybe took place today maybe we'll find out tomorrow um he has a select uh, amount of people that he's able to nominate. Um, if he's really worried about the women, um, it might be something like uh, Janine and Kayla as the pawn. 
Um, he did have a conversation with Kayla. She was very worried. And uh, he said, like, hey, I'm I'm not after you. But it did a little bit feel like a you could be a pawn conversation to me. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, there are other options like Tola as a potential, like throw him up there or uh, maybe even somebody like a Todd uh, has been mentioned. Um, he he was worried about Matt for a little while, but Matt has like gotten in with Anthony. Matt, huge Anthony fan at this point. Matt had a conversation with Vivek uh, where he was like, <laughs> Anthony, we're bringing Dougie to the end, man. And Vivek was like, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's going to beat us all. Uh, and he's like, I don't know. He like didn't even win a comp in his season, though. And he's like, yeah, but he's like so good. He's going to like we can't bring him to the end. And, and and Matt was like, yeah, but he's like so loyal. Like that's what he, that's what he did. <laughs> oh he's God. misted. He's misted. I, like, I think he came pre-misted. You know, <laughs> bless his heart. No. I'm with I, Jean, though. I, she, she the she's the oldest female in the house, correct? Mm. Which I'm like, oh, that's such a misstep that she's oh, not man. talking to the head of household. Like, come on, that's like that's like, especially being you know someone on the older a at like end of the scale here. Like, you got to find every single way to connect with every single person, especially the people in power. And so it's just, I guess maybe she believes that it's going to be they'll always have the numbers if it's a male and female up on the block, and so she'll be safe if that happens but like what if that doesn't happen um it's just interesting to me that she's so quick to get these numbers of the girls together and have a you know a secret name and a you know a hand signal or whatever and but she's not willing to go and put in some work to maybe position herself better in the game and not be a target potentially so i'm surprised because she seems to have knowledge of the game that she's not working this first week a little bit more strong strongly well and and all the info we have from these digital dailies is at least two days old at this point right taryn the most recent one was from yesterday from yesterday okay. Mm -hmm. okay well a lot can change in a day like she may have done well, i mean a lot will change well. in several days uh yeah. by the time we get to Next week's eviction. Oh my god, I can't even. It's so many. When will moms even actually? I don't, I don't, I don't mind because I've makes used it laugh. several too many times. <laughs> but but okay, seven but times so exactly. When are they actually gonna do noms? I can't remember because this like the longer first week is not the usual for BB Can. They used I, to do it. it. Was right. I mean, I think it would make sense for them to do noms today, uh, mm -hmm. and then we'll see them tomorrow. Just timing wise however if they want to just like fast forward to the regular schedule i ass i assume regularly we'll get noms on thursdays uh so we might need to wait until friday to find out which would be wild it's so long um yeah and then i guess uh, we'll see veto would pro will have it on fridays this season because the evictions are on wednesdays oh this is so weird so. yeah which crazy. would be pretty lame because we don't usually get drops on the weekend, so we'd have to wait until Monday to find oh, out the results. And that's probably what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I got to be real about like him. If, if Janine's one of his noms, I think that's lame. I think, oh, the oldest female in the house Anthony's going to go after, like, but be a little more She's not going to be controllable, right? Yeah. Oh, the, Maybe, the oldest like, oh, woman you're, groundbreaking. You're, exactly. You're this <laughs> amazing player and you're going to do the same thing everyone does nearly every single season. Fair, okay, fair, fair. cool. You must oh. be so good at the game. There's actually, there's kind of precedence for this, uh, or precedent for this um, for, for Anthony. Uh, in the early weeks of Big Brother Canada 7, he was really close with Kaylin. Um, who was, uh, you know, the 42 year old? Uh, no, but she was saying she was 28, Taryn. It was very different. <laughs> it's true. It's true. She was, she was actually 28. Um, <laughs> but like, similarly, he had a good relationship with her, but recognized that she had a lot of influence uh, over the house and decided to cut ties. And, I'll, and, and it was a controversial move at the time because it was like she was one of his people. Um, but he he felt at the time that like she's just too good. Like she she is too headstrong. She is too like has her own will and she has good influence with other people. And it wouldn't surprise me if he sort of sees Janine in a similar light. Like, hey, mm -hmm. she has been able to get in with a lot of people. I don't have a relationship with her in this particular case, even though she does really like Anthony. Um, but uh, but I do agree. I, I I do think the bigger threat for Anthony 
is somebody he can't target, um, which is uh, Bailey. Um, Bailey had a conversation with Janine where Janine said, hey, let's cut Lexus and, and bring Dougie further. Uh, like, let's actually betray the women a little bit and let's bring Dougie a little bit further toward the end. Um, and Bailey is like the most gung ho. No, no, we no. Yeah. It's the seven of us. <laughs> like, we are not diverting from that. She said, I will gladly let this be the death of me in the game because <laughs> I'm not going to look stupid when the women lose because we turn on each other. I'm going to be loyal to the women, even if it means I lose. And you guys are the ones that are going to look stupid. <laughs> So. <laughs> well, and okay, so for Janine, I feel like her entire bio is about how she goes to the gym and how that's like her therapy and also just like part of her perfect day. She like she's always talking about the gym. She's quite I, I feel like she has a good chance for what has typically been the week one veto of the like going back and forth in some kind of weird way, maybe on a scooter, maybe in a caterpillar <laughs> sleeping bag thing. Like I feel like <laughs> I, I just I feel she could do I think if she had to army crawl she could do it I don't know <laughs> I, I thought mean, you were going to say get in with Douglas or, or with um, Anthony yeah. because he's like into fitness and personal training I thought that you were going to say like oh she should get in with him and like work I mean, out together, maybe but... but no I just th I just think <laughs> that she's physical I, I like I think that she would be able to win some of the physical comps like she just seems it just seems so important it's to her here. it's interesting that he would want to like I, I understand on the one perspective the strategy of like get rid of the autonomous smart people who think for themselves but like you're also building a house of cards around you of people who are weaker than you if there are smart people left in the house they'll always see you i mean i guess both anthony and v are coming in with a bigger target regardless like they can't escape that but to me i don't know as a, this is my personal opinion as a player like it's more interesting to work with people who are autonomous of course you still you want a few people who you can just no, we're going to be voting with you. Um, but yeah, I'm still, we'll, we'll see what happens. Maybe this mm -hmm. is not the direction they'll go and maybe they will connect. I know a lot of relationships like kind of blossom later than you'd expect. Um, but yeah, it's still kind of a bummer to me if it's Janine. Yeah, I well, like I mean, Bailey. I'm glad she's into, I mean, I wouldn't throw my whole game away to like save a specific kind of alliance, but like <laughs> also, I don't know. Like, but I, would I'm you do it that. to avoid looking stupid? <laughs> Uh, I, I just I do whatever it took to win. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that anymore because no, I obviously would like do whatever it takes to win, but like the, there's so much luck involved in this that I can understand someone also having like their conviction of like I I'm gonna go down in my own way. That doesn't mean I I would ever just like blow up my game for the sake of whatever, but. I'm into Bailey at least like standing her ground because that's also a strategic standpoint. You know what I mean? To actually say this out loud doesn't mean she actually would go down with that ship no matter what, but it means she's trying to like solidify that group and assert herself in the way that a lot of other strong players will do and say like, no, this is the course that we're going to do. So I can get behind that. I haven't seen any of these drops, so I don't know like how it comes across, but I'm down for her to like use that as the metric to control quote unquote yeah. the other women in the group to like keep everyone together and be like no if, if you're gonna do it you're gonna look stupid and using that kind of language to like really make sure we're, we're all sticking together you know do you think she'll be this loud if she wasn't safe you know like well, she's that's fair yeah, yeah but like, you gotta yeah, like, you gotta I'm use your stupid. safety yeah. when you I can mean, you know what I mean? like Bailey seems like the type who she's going to tell you what she thinks. I don't yeah. think that she would be too constrained by not being safe. But I think like that I, as much as I don't like the twist of like half of the house being safe, it at least balances out a level. Like, yes, Anthony has more power because he gets to decide who the nominees are. But having safety allows you to like play in a different way. When you're not vulnerable, you can actually take these kind of risks. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Anthony will be able to play the next HOH. I assume not, right? Like, he's... I assume not, yeah. So like you can kind of like anticipate, OK, he can't come right after me if I assert myself a little bit. Like there's always these windows in Big Brother, I'm sure like people talk about it where like before the veto, like a lot of people are kind of like stepping on eggshells because you don't really know exactly what happens. And there's like these moments of like intense um, strategy that happen afterwards um, once you know you're not chosen to go back on the block as a replacement. And so I think because... Oh, I guess there's still veto. I guess I kind of forgot about that. <laughs> but <laughs> if oh, but you're they're safe. That's what I'm getting at. If you're mm -hmm. safe and you know you're safe, I think it's your chance. Week one matters a lot. And it's yeah. your chance to like really 
form a dynamic in the house. That's what Anthony's trying to do by establishing who he wants to go out, who he doesn't think he can control. And the people who are safe right now should also be trying to do that, obviously without putting their neck out too far. But I'm down for somebody to like assert themselves and, and then be like, and then hopefully win HOH and really solidify that power after. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it, it'll be it'll be interesting to see, especially like how uh, Anthony navigates making these nominations because I do think that Janine will feel blindsided and betrayed uh, even though she hasn't had as many conversations with him he, she does feel really good with him and then it's also like how does he navigate the relationship with the rest of the women who were expecting or hoping that he would go after the guys uh, do they now worry that he's working with the guys does it ruin his relationship with the women there are a few people uh, in particular Avery again who like like Avery is deep with 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 V and also with Anthony um, to the point where on the latest drop she went to Anthony saying listen I was talking with Donna and we were talking about you and how much we like you and how like you're such a softy and like how much you care and she said like that we could use that you know like in the game and I just was like oh I wouldn't do that to, to Anthony like, um, uh, <laughs> like, you know, it's hard to tell. It, 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 it felt so over the top that I was like, is she, is she trying to play him? But she actually had the same conversation with V earlier. Like she was like, she was like, I, I don't, I don't know about Donna anymore. <laughs> but um, does, does Anthony have a little crush on Donna? Like if we're talking about like the whole competition of it all and choosing her whole <laughs> thing, there was some like flirt. Was it flirting that was happening? And like, I don't know. I'm wondering what's going on between the two. I don't think I've seen him speak to Donna on the drop. <laughs> so I, <wouldn't> know. <laughs> I mean, well, okay, for we I guess we didn't really talk about the HOH competition that much, but I feel like it also just like yeah, Anthony, keep saying the same answer over and over and hope that your team picks up on that and yeah, also just yeah. keep saying the same name over. Like, just it's just obvious. It. Yeah. yeah. I was surprised that they didn't <laughs> pick up on that. And I, I thought, well, maybe they're being told like they can't, this is cheating or something well, like I that. I think they were told. So so there was a little bit of drama here um, that they talked about how they were told explicitly, like, you have to be honest with your answers. Okay. Yeah. I assume that took place after he kept saying Donna. Mm -hmm. But then he went back to Donna, so I don't know if he was trying to get it back. Mm -hmm. But then one of the one of the bits of drama from this is that apparently Tola answered the same person for every single question. Uh, mm -hmm. And people are like, how dare he? Like, we were supposed to be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> I okay. I love that they went for like touchy subjects. That's so fun. But imagine if they've done it like week like three, yeah. when people just have yeah. enough time that they're starting to really trust each other, and it's like, damn, I really liked you, and you think I'm the most annoying. Like that—that's where the drama comes from. It's almost too early. It's way too early. I think there were just too many questions. I think it it, it kind of gets it gets blurred in the mm -hmm. just the sheer volume of questions. Um, I think that if we had stuck to like maybe four or five total, um, it's like each each one of those answers matters a little more. There's less time to figure out a way to game the system. Um, and and also like, why is every shot of like the the players themselves cropped right above their answer? Like we didn't see a single <laughs> one of the actual the other people's answers. Like every time it cut to Donna, I was like, what did she say? Yeah. Is, did she catch on? Is she saying Donna? Is Donna, that why he yeah. hasn't eliminated Donna yet from the Donna answers? <laughs> yeah, I found that. Like, I love the idea of this challenge. I agree it may be better placed a little later. I felt like it didn't, like, fully land for me, even though I'm glad they did it. Maybe it was just the way it was produced. Like, you see this kind of thing in other shows sometimes, and it, like, you really feel it when people are said these things about them. I think because it's so early, they're able to sort of laugh it off and go, like, oh, we just didn't know what to say. Picked your name. Like, maybe Donna will feel a little hurt, and Tola, like, maybe they're the two that will leave kind of being, like, ouch. But I... Yeah, I wish they used it a little better, I think. And I did find it weird. I thought they were trying to hide so we couldn't know what the actual answers were so they could say, Anthony, you won, or you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you won, but it, it it removes a big piece of information for us about the actual dynamics in the house. Not that we're, like, staring at every single cube, but it would be good to know. <laughs> what was the theme of the competition? Um, and it does, did it relate to the whole fame and all-stars thing? I was trying to, I just was like, yeah, okay, yeah. I want to harp back on that. Like, BB Cans got to go lean into their theme a little more, I think. Like, was like, it art gallery? Like, it's like they did on. Was it like a high? 
it's supposed to be like a heist situation. Oh, but why like, the paint splatters and all mm, the whole white room? Well, when you steal money from the bank, sometimes Famously. there's an ink packet in it and it stains you. <laughs> and then you become infamous for the bank heist. <laughs> Listen, yeah. I don't know. I don't I think that we are going to have a bad time if we try to make sense of every decision I mean... and where every comp comes from. There's a theme, and I and I follow themes, so you know I just appreciate if they put the effort in the big theme. Like I love the opening of yeah. all the cast people. Like I think that's pretty fun. And so if they're trying to be all Hollywood North, let me see some Hollywood North. I agree, at least for like our first week. Like bring us right? in and, and loop us back in every now and then. I know the themes can be corny, but it's fun. <laughs> I I can't not to go back to like the premiere, but. I can't remember which season did this, but there was one season where the premiere, there were no confessionals and it was just all the interactions. The whole first episode was people coming in, just conversations, no talking heads. And I, I remember like loving that. It might have been last season or the one before, um, but I noticed they put confessionals back in again because it's also like people aren't good at confessionals yet when they first get <laughs> in the house. Um, and well, yeah, I feel like they've leaned into their themes more in the past. Uh, all right. Well, is there anything else we should uh, we should talk about before we we wrap up the fashion show? Well, oh do, my God. I mean, okay. it was more I so getting thoughts, ready okay, for the fashion I, show. I had thoughts on the fashion show. <laughs> oh, Taryn, please share. <laughs> my thoughts. My thoughts on the fashion show is that it it it's too early for a fashion show. Like, I think the fun of a fa and, and listen, I I get it. Like, I'm not like the target audience for the fashion show, but like. <laughs> For me, at least, the point of the fashion show is that, like, it's fun to see people in these, like, new clothes and, like, right. these we're not new sick looks. of their wardrobe yet. Like, mm -hmm. I just met these people. I've seen them in two outfits. Like, just, like, just, just last episode, <laughs> they were in nicer outfits. than. And those outfits were also picked for them. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, but here's the problem, Taryn, and what you're forgetting to consider is that the fashion show is not about me. It's not about you. It's not about the contestants. It's about winners. Yeah. Are you going to be a <laughs> fashionista? What do they say in the commercials? <laughs> I can't even remember. Um, yeah, everyone uh, loves the winner. <laughs> Where the winner is you. Where the winner is you. Oh, yes. wow. I don't, I don't remember that. That's beautiful. But like, it's just. It's just crazy. Winners has all this money to sponsor Big Brother Canada. They sh is it I because think, should of invest Bethany? it in the stock. <laughs> I think they should invest it in their stock. Is it because Bethany's been in Abbots Abbotsford? Really? Okay, don't, up? Kate. <laughs> don't tell, that is a topic for Mess Magnet. That is not a topic for the Big Brother Canada. Winners! <laughs> I feel like it's a, I guess it's a necessary evil. Like we, we, we have to go through these sponsored segments. Just it's one. And I like all love for the crew and production, but sometimes I am watching the show and I'm like, I can't believe I was on this show. Like, and I can't believe if I'm like telling my friends to watch this show, like this no, is what they're Mitch, seeing. Imagine that feeling, but then being like, Shit, I wasn't even good enough for this show. <laughs> you were too good for it. That's what happened. Oh, I don't think I, yeah, like we didn't have any like dressing sponsors back in our day, back did, in my did, day. Okay, but... season four was, did you guys already, did you guys have Hasbro at that point? Was that when there was board games or was that after? No, we did not. Yeah. <laughs> and also one thing not to do with sponsors that I'm always so jealous of new contestants is that they have a bedtime, allegedly, like uh, they have to go to bed at a certain time. I went actually insane in the first couple weeks because we wouldn't sleep everyone would stay up all night and i was like i can't go to bed then was running on like literally two or three hours of sleep and like a weekend was like i can't function properly so they're all so lucky to be able to sleep um but yeah the sponsors i get it they have to do it it's too bad that that some of them i feel like they do well especially i mean i was literally screaming when they were like the prize is Ten thousand from this, ten thousand <laughs> like just oh, ten thousand from this, ten thousand from this. Cuba from Sunway. <laughs> yeah. car, like... I was like, oh, oh, oh. like it's still going. Um, but I mean, cool, lots of stuff for them. But it was just like, wow, this took like a full minute to say all this. <laughs> it's the most lot. sponsors ever. <laughs> Was there 11 or 12? No, it's 12, right? For the year? For the yeah, and, and again, they teased like a mystery sponsor that they were going to drop and like... 
Kid, but didn't they do this last year yeah. too? And who was the mystery sponsor? I don't, I don't remember. It was Disney, wasn't it? Little Little Mermaid? Wasn't that the mystery one? Was that the mystery? Was it? I, I forget. Because so. I feel like by the time it happened, sponsored. like this is the problem too, especially when there's no feeds. Like I don't remember hardly a thing from last year. I, know. I didn't know. Like I didn't know the it's Daniel weird. came out to host the <laughs> HOH, and I was like, I don't know this man. Like <laughs> I only saw him on the digital dailies. Like he's obviously he's an alumni, and it's great for him to get to come back. But it's like I don't know him like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's it's interesting watching. It's 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 like I I usually really know people and it's mm -hmm. like how they think and how they feel and like I could remember a lot of seasons from the past because I was watching the feeds and so it's really interesting to see now that I haven't had that connection with them and the season just passed I don't remember them at all. Remember someone from fifteen years ago a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we we wild. played we played Blood on the Clock Tower last week and uh Omer was like, Taryn, you watch Claire on the live feeds. Is she lying? And I was like, Yeah, I think she is. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do that with regular Canada eleven people. <laughs> oh my god. Kate. Uh, the, like I, again I was talking I was talking to a friend and we were th talking about like oh are they gonna maybe have someone host every HOH are they gonna be bringing maybe. more people in or are they gonna lean heavily on last season maybe for like the Wendy's deliveries and they were like oh like do you think this person will do it I'm not gonna name names and I literally was like who is that I don't <laughs> know who you're talking about and they were on last season and I who was it? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm oh, trying to be mean okay <laughs> sorry, 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 like, sorry, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean I, I had to ask my chat who Claudia was. Uh, oh, no. okay, that's, like Claudia bad. that's pretty and bad. And she was in the final two. I feel oh. a lot better now about my football earlier tonight than <laughs> Um. Anyway, uh, this was very fun. Um, it's, you know, it, it, I do think, so people have been asking, like, are the digital dailies better? Um, Longer. To which I would answer, like, I don't, it's hard to say. So far, because uh, like they 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 gave us something that we didn't have before, which is like these early days. Um, they seem like maybe a, like I mean, listen, the the bar was <laughs> below the floor. Like it was <laughs> the bar was two hours of vacuuming. Um, so <laughs> like, so far, wait, did they actually give the entrances to the house? I thought I saw someone yeah, say yeah. that, like people yeah. walking in, like one mm -hmm. more group by group. Oh, that's mm -hmm. so fun! I want to go watch yes. that. Yeah. Um, it is fun. Yeah, that's a nice, like, that's a memory. Uh, that's why I like watching the first couple episodes, just to, like, relive that, like, crazy, like, lights, camera action. Sorry, yeah. Kristen. You, you were it's there. Okay. You it's okay. It's <laughs> okay. I'm old. It's been many years. I'm yeah. fine now. <laughs> um. So, yeah, I mean, I would say it, the, it, it is better than, than two hours of vacuuming. Um. It's still, for me at least, like, not great. Uh, it's very mm -hmm. disorienting because we're just cutting from like I have no idea like when conversations took place or like sometimes there's clearly been like eight out like you're watching one conversation with with like let's say I'm watching Anthony talk to V and then all of a sudden quick cut it's Anthony talking to V but eight hours later <laughs> like mm -hmm. it's like whoa <laughs> uh, but and you don't even know it's eight hours. like you don't know how long it's been and uh, you yeah I gotta pay, maybe pick up on context cues. Uh, and it's just it's all over the place in that sense. Um, but, uh, you know, that's that's what we're here for, to help give you what you need to know from them. <laughs> if you don't care to watch them yourself. Uh, but if you do want to watch them, uh, you know, um, find find me over on Twitter. I've got a tweet pinned that is entirely unrelated uh, about VPNs. Um, so uh, <laughs> check it out. Um, you can also. Uh, join us for watch parties. I'm always live on Twitch uh, watching these episodes with all of you. Today was a three hour marathon of two hours Woo. of Survivor and then Big Brother Canada. Now we're look, we're still here. I've been I've been going for, you know, like, uh, what, over five hours now. So wow. uh, <laughs> you're the winner. <laughs> the winner, is, you, winner? is there a winner in this situation? Chantel? <laughs> Um, and of course, uh, check out the RGP Patreon, um, where I, I, I think the, the Jelinski several deal is, is still going. I think I heard that uh, Rob right. was saying that earlier on the Survivor podcast. So, uh, so check that out. Um, Mitch, what are, what are you up to? Oh, um, oh, just living life, you know, like trying to have the best life ever. No, I don't know. Just <laughs> still making science videos on the internet as they have science. We have a podcast as well called Side Note Podcast. If you want to hear about pop science with two gay guys 
being as queer as possible. Um, come and, and it's it so fun. Go listen so to fun. Side Note. Thanks. Um, Kirsten, what do you got going on? Yes, so every week, myself and Sasha Joseph are talking pop culture, celeb gossip, trending topics over on Mess Magnets. Uh, last week, we went into the whole conspiracy of where in the world is Kate Middleton, and that's up on the REJP YouTube channel if you want to go watch that. Uh, and then myself and Lindsay Wilson are on BoJack Horse Pod, breaking down season three of Tuka and Birdie, uh, so you can check that out as well. And you can follow me everywhere at Kirsten Said What, including twitch.tv slash Kirsten Said What. Ryan Chantel. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Shanfran Fran or my YouTube channel, Reality Realness with three S's. See you. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us here tonight. And we will see all of you on Friday, which is Ooh. the next podcast we'll be doing Friday, 7 30 p.m. Eastern, uh, where we will talk through whatever we learn uh, from the next two uh, daily digital, digital daily drops. <laughs> Uh, which will hopefully at least be the nominations and we'll have a, like a slightly better idea of what we're looking at here uh, going into the this, I guess, the first week still of the show. <laughs> Feels like it's already been on for like a week. It's been <laughs> two episodes, Taryn. It started yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much. And we will see you next time.